Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity Shader Graph tutorial. It's been a while since I've made one, but uh, I've had a few people asking over time about how do you uh, change the parameters of a shader, like a shader graph shader in code. So that may be like the uh, shader changes depending on the character's health or, you know, it might change some value depending on whatever happening in code normally. Um, so far, all of the things have been changed in the inspector or by time, like I'm showing you now. But I'll be showing you how to make this dissolve shader go down uh, with like damage taken, for example. I mean, I'm not going to add enemies in this, but I'll add it so that we can control the health, which will then in turn control the um, shader. And with this, you can then apply it to anything, uh, any shader you've got where you want a parameter to be able to be changed uh, by code. You can just put it in. Um, it is just the same as you would do with a normal like written shader. But obviously, most people watching these videos haven't coded shaders normally before because it's generally this is like an entry level kind of thing you know to get you into shaders before you learn how to code them properly uh, it's quite handy obviously it's also a lot faster to do things uh, simple things but it's a lot you know slower to do more complex things that aren't quite achievable yet but anyway let, let's get into it so this video shouldn't be too long anyway um, here we've got the simple dissolve shader which uh, on a time let's see if we go into uh, capsule when we go down here, we can't actually see it uh, moving right now because uh, this this isn't hooked up in the shader to controlling it. We will change that though. Uh, currently, the sign time is just going between like one and minus one to make it appear and disappear. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that, well, let's pause it first. So let's go into the shader. I made this a while back. Obviously you can use uh, whatever shader you want for this. So it's in this folder and it's here, dissolve shader. So basically, if you, I mean, you should already know parameters are what we've got here. These are values we take in that can change things. And currently I'm not using dissolve value, I'm using time. So let's get rid of this. And we're gonna put in dissolve value instead. So now if I save this, that's all you need to do. Uh, you can then close this. Um, so now when I press play, it's not gonna animate. Um, it's going to change only when I change this slider. So capsule slider. Now, as you know, in an actual game, you can't sit in the inspector tweaking things. So let's say we want this to, you know, be set to the character's uh, percentage of HP. So if they're on full health, it's like this. If they're on half health, it's like this. And if they're dead, it's like this, for example. So obviously this isn't going to look very nice, but it's going to change this slider depending on the health of the character so that in the actual game running time, it can actually change this value, which is what we want. So... What we need to do is we first of all need to add some code onto this uh, object. So we're going to add a code. I made one earlier when I was messing around just called capsule health because, I mean, for the sake of this test, it's just the health of the capsule. Um, and then once this is compiled, we will open it up. Doop -doo. Um, now, what we'll do is I'm just going to think about, yeah, I'll, I'll just do this very simply. I'm sure anyone watching this, you can apply it to your own game. Because obviously I'm not making this in a game, it's just in a test scene. So let's just get rid of these. Now, first of all, we are gonna need to have a, let's think, we need a public material, which is so that we can refer to the material with the shader on. And I'll call it a dissolve mat. So that's gonna be the, the material. And I'll also have a um, health, but well, it's not a health, it's a uh, float health. And I'll also have a max health, so that I can work out a percentage. Uh, now in void start, we will, um, whoops, ooh, what am I doing, do not want that, okay, so in void start, we are going to, well, we can either get, just to show how it works first, we can get float to find the value in a shader, so like, you could actually, if you wanted, change code depending on the shader, rather than shading, uh, changing the shader depending on code, it's up to you completely. Uh, what we want for this is we want to change the shader's value on the slider to be the percentage of the player's health. Now, if you want a percentage of a player's health, you can take the health divided by the max health. So, in the start, we will do dissolve mat dot, and then basically, inside here, this is referring to the shader on the material, because what a material is in Unity, all, all a material is, is the interface on here, if material isn't actually a thing as such, it's, it's quite hard to explain what I'm trying to say here. Think of it as the material is just this window and the shader is behind the scenes changing all these values, whatever. That's what a shader is. On a standard material, it's a standard shader, which is called like standard physical based on low uh, render, lightweight, lightweight render pipeline. It's called standard, um, 
physically based or whatever of one using. These are all different shaders and we just use a material to plop it onto. So if we get this material with a shader on, we can then do get, uh, no not get, sorry. Well, you can get if you want, you can get flow, you can get vector, you can whatever, but you can also do uh, set float to set a value in the um, parameters. So as you see here, sets a named float value and it takes in a string and a float. So the string we're going to take in, I'll get in a second, uh, and the float is going to be the percentage of health. So we're going to take a health divided by max health. That'll give us a percentage. But in here, we need a string, which is the name of the float inside the material we're going to change. Now, when I tried this ages ago, I just thought uh, Shader Graph wasn't ready for this yet, but it's actually just me being stupid. I thought that the float, well, let, let's find our material first. So um, scenes 05, dissolve shader. Here we go. Here's our information on our shader. Here's the properties. So we have edge width, edge color, and dissolve value, which we can change in the um, code, the C sharp code. I, when, when I put, you know, set float and get the name of the float, I called it, um, you know, dissolve value, but it's not actually called dissolve value. It's called, you know, vector1 underscore 7a 9a 7b 5d I don't know why well I just assumed that would make sense I kind of ignored what this was I thought this was some kind of other secret like code name behind the scenes but that's actually the name we're referring to so whatever your value is you want to change you get this kind of code on the left and you put that into the uh, string here so uh, it's a vector1 uh, 7a 987b b5d and now that's referring to the shader and we can set the float this is a float to this value and what we're going to do is to make this actually functional is we're going to do we're going to in the update to make this you know react to what we do we're going to say uh, if input uh, dot get oopsie daisy input dot get key down uh, key code dot space and then we'll say, so when we press space bar, we want uh, health. We'll take off um, 10 health, maybe. We'll, we'll take off 5 health. Um, and then as soon as we've taken off health, we want to update it again. So this start one isn't really necessary. It just makes sure that when the object spawns, it's at full, you know, the shader is completely visible. And then as we take off health, we then update it. We could just put this in the update, but it'd be wasting, like, it would be doing it every frame when nothing's happening. This only does it when it gets updated. If you add code on your enemy where like you had a function for it taking damage, um, then you would put this in the function. You put this wherever you think you need to, to be updated with the thing. So now when we press space bar, it's going to take five off the health, then it's going to set it to the percentage of health. Now this video, as I said, isn't going to be very long. Uh, this is just showing you how to set this up for your shaders, which is very useful if you want them to actually be useful shaders. Um, so now, oops, we have got an error. No, we don't. Uh, yes, we do. So on the capsule, we put a public material and I haven't actually dragged it in. So you can either go and find your material and drag it in, or you can literally just drag it from here, the dissolve mat there. So if I set the health uh, to 100 and the max health, let's see what happens. So we press play and we see that it's visible. And if I press spacebar and I've done this right, as you see down here, it's gone to 0.95. The actual value is changing. And on our shader, we see a tiny bit there dissolved. If I press it again, Every time I press it, it keeps going down 0.5. It will keep going negative, but obviously by this point, the enemy would be dead anyway. Now, obviously, I can just uh, drag it back up and then just... Actually, no, that's not going to work. If I want to reset it, I'd have to set the health back and then press spacebar. So as you see, every time it takes damage, it updates, and the shader slowly dissolves more and more. And to be honest, there isn't much more to this video. Uh, you should be able to take this and apply it to yours. Uh, I hope you know the video is helpful and it was... You know, it's pretty short, but that's all I needed to cover. There wasn't much more than that. So obviously, I'm just going to say a few more things at the end. You can obviously stop watching if you want, but um, obviously leaving a like and subscription to the channel would be lovely. That's uh, the most I can ask for. Um, I can also suggest you to join our Discord channel in the description, uh, which is where we discuss Unity, uh, JavaScript, C Sharp, whatever, whatever, games, just anything related to this channel you can discuss in the server and we're slowly growing in members you know we're getting quite a few more people and tonight if you if you're seeing this video as soon as it comes out we're actually doing a uh, game jam this weekend on the server uh, the theme i will release at midnight tonight uh, 
British Standard Time. Uh, so that's in an hour and a half from now. Well, sorry, two hours and a half from now. Um, and, you know, it's just going to be a friendly competition. There's not going to be any prizes. Though the first, second, and third place is going to be showcase are going to be showcased in a video that I'm going to do just after the event on maybe Monday or Tuesday. We're gonna me and the other admins are gonna uh, rank the the submissions and then pick a first, second, third place winner and then do a video showcasing those games. So you get a bit bit of publicity. It's also practice. The main reason people do game jams and it's quite fun to get together and all make something on a particular topic. But if you've heard this already, uh, pretty sure. You know, you'll have heard this already. Obviously, if you want to join, then you can still you still have time to join. Any of you that already watch my channel that haven't uh, joined it, that that can, then obviously I recommend doing it. But I'm not going to force anyone. So anyway, yeah. I uh, hope this video was uh, informative. I hope you all understood it. Obviously, comment if you need help or anything. I'm always willing to give help to anyone. I think I've replied to every single comment on my channel so far. But since we're slowly growing uh, over 500 subs now, I'm getting quite a few comments. So I might end up struggling to keep up, but I'll try my best. So anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.